finished watching The Last Duel with my family, my mother and father. Um, so, it's, it's not really a family movie, right off the bat, I'd say. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. So, it's a 2021 movie directed by Ridley Scott, and Scott features a star cast, of course, Matt Damon, Adam Driver, Jodie Comer, who I recognize, but don't know from where, and Ben Affleck. So, personally, I picked up this movie 100% because of Adam Driver. That's just, that's the reason, I admit it. Um, you've got Kylo Ren, The Martian, and Batman in the same movie as each other, so that's a selling point for me. Um, but uh, it kind of blew me, blew me away just a tiny bit, but also, it's hard to explain. So yeah, okay, let me just uh, start with the plot if I can summarize this. Um, okay, so Matt Damon's character, Jean, is a respected soldier. And, uh, but he doesn't have a, he's going to all these risky battles where, he's, you know, there's a very good chance he's not going to come back home and he doesn't have an heir. So he needs someone to leave his fortune to because that's just the way they did things back then. Um, so it's super important to keep the family lineage going and the bloodline going. So he gets into an arranged marriage, um, with a woman that he has zero chemistry with and basically zero respect for. Um, and... This other guy, Adam Driver's character, Jacques, he is, uh, he's an intelligent person, he, you know, considering, like, everyone in this movie is, like, pea-brained, right? Um, so he's, he's quite intelligent compared to everyone else, but he's also a bit of a zealot, a, like, a religious fanatic, and he's a little bit deluded. He has delusions of grandeur, basically. Um, and he's, the two of them are friends, John and Jack, and they, Jacques, Jacques starts to ruin Jean's life a little bit because he gets in league with Pierre, who's this like, this like philanthropist who's in charge of the legal system where they are. I guess there's like, you know, there's like a king and there's probably lower level. I didn't catch his title, but I'm sure he's like some sort of lord that rules over, um, you know, a large portion of the country. But, um, so he gets friends in high places and it inadvertently kind of screws up with Matt Damon's life. Jean and Jacques, um, and, you know, the two of them are friends, so he, Jacques starts, he, he, he's still trying to, like, they're still trying to be friends with each other, even though they're on complete opposite sides of the law, and, um, uh, it's just a little bit hard to explain, you kind of have to watch it to understand what's going on, there's a lot, um, and it's constantly changing, but basically, Jacques is screwing with Jean's life, they are friends, and eventually Jacques rapes Jean's wife because he falls madly in love with her and is like so deluded that like usually in movies like this the bad guy has some sort of like redeeming quality or explanation for the reasons but he really is just a delusional person who just took Jean's wife by force and he just he genuinely believes in his own mind that he's innocent because he's just delusional so the last duel refers to the duel. So apparently, the only law, the only lawful way to go about this business, because this is the 1300s, it's a shitty time to live in. Regardless of, I mean, I wouldn't want to be the woman in the 1300s, but to be honest, I wouldn't want to be a man in the 1300s either. If you're a man, um, you're gonna get sold to war. You're gonna die in war. You're gonna some king's gonna use you as a servant. And if you're a woman, you're basically someone's property. Okay, men own women basically. So. In the legal system, when Jacques raped um, Margaret, Marguerite, so that was basically, it was a crime not against her, it was a crime against her owner, which is her husband. So that's how ridiculous, like, there are so many times in this movie that you're just going to roll your eyes, but it's historically accurate, and I'm glad this movie um, wasn't afraid to, like, be itself, you know? Like, in, in, our, in today's progressive age, um, you, they kind of censor stuff like this because they just want to forget about the history often, right? Like, they, they just don't want to talk about it, just pretend it didn't happen. But stuff like slavery and stuff like this, this happened. Like, this stuff happened. So I think this movie can teach you some stuff. I definitely learned some things. Um, so, yeah. The Last Duel is a good time. It draws you in with some trailer action. There's very low amounts of action, which, I, I mean, I didn't know what, what this movie was when I bought it. I just bought it because Adam Driver. But, um... It's a, I'm actually glad it wasn't action because I've seen a lot of medieval action movies and I'm kind of tired of it. So it draws you in, it puts a couple scenes in there so they can put it in the trailer. 
Um, but really, it is a drama. It is um, a very interesting storytelling perspective. They have like the three, they have like the three perspectives, which brings me to my one problem. Um, while I do appreciate the perspective, and it has a lot of novelty to it, especially when um, like there's different lines, different words said when you change from perspectives in the same scene. That's pretty cool. But it, it does extend the movie's runtime a lot. Like, if Jacques doesn't have a reason for his actions, then why'd he get an entire section to himself, you know? And Marguerite's section maybe could should have been the first section, to be honest. I might have reordered this a little bit. So, yeah. I like that both male protagonists, you can't root for them. I actually thought that was kind of cool. Um, because, you know, Jean basically treats his wife poorly and doesn't believe her. But at the same time, you know, like... How are you supposed to prove stuff like that? You know, like I feel bad for her just because there really is no way to prove something like that. So they they leave it in God's hands. So whoever survives, that's what God wills. And it's just it's a learning movie. You know, it's, it's a lot of historical accuracy, and it's a it's a period piece more than anything else. So keep that in mind. Um, it's got the big budget. It's got amazing visuals and scenery and sets. But um, yeah. Just watch it. Um, yeah, I, I do recommend it, but it is a bit extreme. Um, you know, the rape scenes, they, they show it twice. I wish they only showed it once, to be honest. The second time, I was like, oh, come on. I don't want to see this again. And it's even worse because it's from her perspective, so she screams even more. Um, so it's quite graphic at times. But again, I'm glad they didn't censor stuff like this, you know, because that, that adds, like, my heart was pumping during the first rape scene. Like, it just, those kind of emotions, you're not going to invoke them if you're trying to censor your movie. So I'm glad they're being raw and real. It is all just make-believe, of course. Well, actually, this is based on a real story and a book. But, um, okay, so that doesn't work. I'd take that back then. But we know they're actors, right? So it's good that they're letting them act. You know, they're pretending to be something they're not. So yeah, The Last Duel, highly recommend it. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. I think it's pretty solid. I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, I don't know if I'd watch it again. But I'm glad I watched it this time.